Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous Patreons, as well as my British Rail Critics and my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward and Captain Von Thrust III. You are the reason why this content remains exceedingly presumptuous. I don't even know where I was going with that one. Well, we're going we're to stick with it. I don't even care right now. It's just one of, one of those things that I just say. I just say these things. The words come out, and th there you go. There's words for you. You're welcome. That's what we came here for. Words, right? Yes? No? No, not at all? History? Right, got it. Today, we are going to discuss one of the earliest steam explosions known, and in fact, the very first American steam explosion. This is the story of the best friend of Charleston. The best friend of Charleston is one of the earliest locomotives constructed in America. It was delivered in October of 1830, and its first run was December 25th that same year. It was built for the South Carolina Canal and Railroad Company by the West Point Foundry of New York. The best friend of Charleston is actually an unofficial name, but it was based off of the fact that it operated in Charleston, South Carolina. It was a 040 locomotive, very, very early design, as I'm sure you can tell. But for its era, it was actually quite good, capable of traveling up to 25 miles per hour, or 40 kilometers per hour, and in those days, that might as well have been light speed. The locomotive was warmly received by the area. People were enjoying the new technology and the new availability of speedy public transit. It was something that was revolutionary for the time, and the best friend of Charleston was just one of many locomotives that were showing people what the new advent of steam power could provide for the future. But unfortunately, the best friend was not long for the world, as an incident on June 17, 1831 would show. As the best friend was in operation, the firemen opted to uh, do something terrible. Like, just the worst thing he could have done. As most of you are probably aware, a steam locomotive usually operates with two people. An engineer, or driver, and a fireman. And most of them, including the best friend, are equipped with what are called safety valves. Because a steam locomotive is a pressure-based system, the safety valve is a critical component, as not only does it allow excess steam to be released from the boiler, but it will alert the crew that the pressure is building too high, and to cool things off a bit. The firemen, apparently not being trained very well, or simply not caring, opted to do, well, one of two things. Sources aren't clear exactly what he did. Some say he simply closed the valve, which you can manually do. You should not, but you can do it. But other accounts actually say he used a flat piece of wood and sat on the safety valve to silence it. Seriously. It's unclear which one he did, but either way, closing the safety valve, especially one that is currently, you know, going off, is actually a really terrible thing to do, because the whole point of the safety valve is to release excess steam. If it's not going out with the safety valve, it will find another way, eventually. And sometimes that way is very cataclysmic, as it was in this case. The best friend exploded showering debris and hot coals all over the place. The only victim was the fireman, who, to be fair, was the one who chose to silence the safety valve, so... Yeah, I mean, I feel bad that he's dead, but I mean, also, he kind of asked for it. The engineer, Nicholas Darrell, was actually unharmed. This was likely for two reasons. A, the best friend of Charleston's design, as you can see, has the driver on the opposite end of the locomotive compared to the fireman. But additionally, and probably primarily because he still would have been close enough to be hurt, the reason he was uninjured is that at that time, there weren't conductors to handle the cars, passengers, and switches. It was actually the driver's responsibility to do all that, and at the time of the explosion, Nicholas wasn't even on the locomotive, which is mostly why he escaped unharmed. However, in the advent of the best friend's destruction, the railroad opted to make it a rule that the engineers have to stay with the locomotive at all times while it's in operation. Had Nicholas been on the locomotive, he probably would have seen the firemen do something cripplingly stupid and be able to be like, hey, wow, don't actually do that. The best friend was salvaged, and its parts were used to build another locomotive, the Phoenix, a very appropriate name, all things considered, and that was in operation until at least the Civil War. Despite what happened, the best friend is relevant 
as arguably the first successful revenue service locomotives in America. The Tom-Tom was never used for that purpose, as it was only built as a demonstrator, whereas the Best Friend not only was built for the purpose, but served it, and it would have kept doing it had it not been for that fireman. There's a couple replicas of the Best Friend, one of which is operable, and it was constructed in 1928 to commemorate the centenary of the South Carolina Canal and Railroad. And there's also the Best Friend of Charleston Museum, which opened May of 2014 in the Charleston Historic District. And on one hand, it's kind of nice not to be able to blame a crown chief for a boiler explosion, which I know rarely happens on this channel, but also, do I even have to say don't sit on your safety valve? Like, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that. You guys kidding me? Come on, man. What were you doing? Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.